Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing characteristic subgroups. Okay, so in the previous video we saw the definition of a characteristic subgroup, and we saw that it's a stronger version of being a normal subgroup. Indeed, being a characteristic subgroup means that whatever automorphism you can dream up of the larger group capital G, it must be the case that that automorphism fixes the characteristic subgroup. Whereas, of course, being normal means that whatever inner automorphism that you can dream up of the group capital G, that inner automorphism must fix the normal subgroup. Okay, so that's a weaker condition than being a characteristic subgroup. Okay, in this video what I want to do is just give you a few, uh, just two in fact, uh, little theorems concerning characteristic subgroups which are very useful. Okay, and they're very, very simple theorems. So we'll start off with what I'll call uh, Theorem 1. Okay, and Theorem 1, really, it doesn't require any proof at all. It's very obvious as soon as you say it. Okay, so Theorem 1 is uh, a way to actually conclude that a subgroup is a characteristic subgroup. It's a very easy way that you can instantly conclude that a certain subgroup is a characteristic subgroup. Okay, so if H is a subgroup of G, then you can conclude that H is a characteristic subgroup of G if H is the only subgroup of G with that order. Okay, so how can I write this quickly? So if H is the only subgroup of its order. Okay, so I'll say, let's say that the order of the subgroup H is equal to some little n. Okay, so if H is the only subgroup of G, uh, which has order uh, n, of order n, then I claim that you can instantly conclude, so you can instantly conclude from this, that H is a characteristic subgroup of G. Okay, now why is that the case? Well, to check that it's a characteristic subgroup of G, of course, what we need to ask is, is it going to be fixed by all automorphisms of G? So if we take an arbitrary automorphism of G and consider what it's going to map H onto, well, we know that it has to map it onto a subgroup in the group capital G that has the same order as this subgroup capital H, but now we're saying H is the only subgroup of that order. So there is only one option for what it can be mapped onto. It can only be mapped onto H, and there, that is why, if you have only one subgroup of that order, you can instantly conclude that it is characteristic in the uh, group capital G. Okay, so there's theorem 1 done, a very nice, easy way to instantly conclude that a certain subgroup is indeed a characteristic subgroup. Okay, right, uh, now theorem 2. Okay, so theorem 2 is a little bit more complicated, but uh, still not that complicated. Okay, so theorem 2 now concerns two subgroups, one inside of the other. So let's say that K is the smaller subgroup. So let's say K is a characteristic subgroup of H which itself is a normal subgroup of G. So K is a characteristic subgroup of H, and H is a normal subgroup in G. Okay, so of course, uh, these are nested inside one another. H is a subgroup of G, and K is a subgroup of H, and they're special subgroups. H is a normal subgroup of G, and K is a characteristic subgroup of H. Then the claim is, so then the claim is that K is going to be a normal subgroup inside of G. Now note, that is not true if you can only conclude that K is normal inside of H. So if you've got that K is a normal subgroup of H and H is a normal subgroup of G, it does not imply that K is a normal subgroup of G. However, if you've got the fact that K is this stronger version of a normal subgroup inside of H, so K is a characteristic subgroup of H, and you've got that H is a normal subgroup of G, then that is enough to conclude that K is a normal subgroup inside of G. Okay, so I'll repeat that again. If you just have that K is a normal subgroup of H and H is a normal subgroup of G, you cannot conclude that K is normal inside of G. It's not good enough. It has to be the case that K is characteristic inside of H, the stronger version, and H is normal inside of G. Okay, so let's prove this. So what we need to prove is that if you take an arbitrary element from the group capital G, so if all little g is an element of capital G, we need to prove that if you use it to conjugate k with, so you take gk g inverse, 
you actually get k back again. So we need to prove that all of the elements of the group capital G, when you use them to conjugate k, fix k. They keep it as the same uh, subgroup k. Okay, right, so how can we do that? Well, what do we know? We know that for all G is an element of capital G, that if you conjugate H by G, so if you do GH, G inverse, you're going to get H back again, okay? We know that because H is a normal subgroup in G, so any inner automorphism of G, uh, i.e. conjugating by an element of G, is going to keep H the same, okay? So what does that mean? That means that all of these inner automorphisms of G they can actually be viewed as being automorphisms of H. Okay, do you understand why? Because whatever little g you take in G, you look through all of these inner automorphisms of G, basically. If you restrict them down just to looking at H, they are effectively automorphisms of H because they t take H onto itself. Okay, so all of the inner automorphisms of G, when they're restricted down to just the restricted domain of H, they are automorphisms of H. So in fact, inner automorphisms of G, because H is a normal subgroup of G, are automorphisms of G. Okay, so um, if phi is an element of the inner automorphisms of G, what I can conclude from this is that phi restricted down to H is an element of the automorphisms of H. Okay? Because, as I say, uh, restricted down to H, it's just a bijective mapping from H to H, which, of course, is going to obey the compatibility condition. Okay, it's not necessarily going to be an inner automorphism of H, because you might be conjugating here by elements of G that are outside of H, okay, and therefore wouldn't be counted as an inner automorphism of H. Okay, so now why can I conclude that if I restrict this um, mapping further, just down to the subgroup K, that it is going to fix K, well, because I know that K is characteristic in H, so I know whatever automorphism you have of H, if you act it on K, you're just going to get K back again. This conjugation by this element G, I've just concluded that that's an automorphism of H, and therefore, uh, when you restrict it down to K, you are indeed going to get it fixing K, because K is a characteristic subgroup of H. So indeed, any of these inner automorphisms of G are going to fix K, and therefore K is going to be normal inside of G. Okay, and that's Theorem 2 complete, so that's the entire video complete, so we will uh, leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed the video.